Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back for another brand new video and it's a big one. The day some might even use the word spicy because it certainly will be in the comment section below as we're here to talk about the current captain of this football club, James Henry Tavernier. That's right! I middle named them so you know we're here to be serious and look we're, everyone's probably heard the news yesterday or saw it tweeted out or someone's mentioned it to another that the Turkish club has went ahead and bid for the current captain of this football club and that got a lot of people talking you know what I mean four minute move being excited being sad being mad being glad it was a mixed emotions late last night and everyone in their da had their say on it but I took a day I took a night ladies and gentlemen because one I was actually out and I couldn't actually film at that time. But two, two, Lizzie, I wanted to let it sink into the old grey noggin just to get my thoughts properly put together so me and thee could come here and discuss it properly. The good, the bad and the ugly of this. What it could mean for the football club. Where do we go from there? Is it the right time to move Tavon? Can we afford to move Tavon? We're going to discuss every little thing surrounding James Henry Tavernier. So strap yourselves in. And if you've been following the videos this summer, we've talked a lot about bringing potential experience in and needing that experience. I'm as expecting experience to go out and I feel like we're edging closer and closer to it. In fact, in our last video four or five days ago, I did say I was expecting one domino to fall very shortly and that should kick in the experience leaving this football club. And I feel like we're getting there. We're starting to bang on this door as Tavernier might, just might, be that first domino to fall and the first bit of experience to leave this current crop, eh, crop sorry, of Rangers players and move on elsewhere. But I do want to actually go ahead and dive right into this video because there is so much I actually want to discuss with you tonight. So let's go ahead and get into it then, shall we? And we're going to start off with the actual bid. It did come from Trabzonspor again, the Turkish side. It's also signed Barisic and John Lundstrom. You know what I mean? Now they're bidding officially for Tavernier. Like what they're doing is the, t the director of football, head of scout and chairman sitting there getting lost and some brain rot YouTube gone doing rabbit hole after rabbit hole found the road to Seville and went you know what I want a wee bit of that because that is free of the living that was a part of those days is now out here getting signed it's absolutely incredible ladies and gentlemen they've already took Barisic they've already took Lonnie now they're licking their lips and saying I I want the golden boot winner and to be fair out of all of them I'd understand it what I will say ladies and gentlemen is Scott Rice available if you want a winger you know what I mean? He was probably not in any of the highlights, if I'm honest. But he was there, and he started the Europa League final, you know what I mean? He's played more European finals than Messi, recently. <sighs> no, maybe they want him. Back to the actual bid itself. No other true evaluations have been put out. There's been some crazy figures I've seen. I've seen from 2 million to 14 million to 8 million. And everyone's just guessing. We know what it is, ladies and gentlemen. It is the, the age of speculation and misinformation. That's the age we currently live in. So I'm not going to break down any of the figures because nothing has been officially done. You know what I mean? The actual reporter that's been in the trenches and has been doing this before Fab came in and took all the glory, because that's what that lad actually does, has been very consistent and he hasn't said or much uttered a single number regarding what bid or what the valuation of the bid was sent to Tavernier. The only thing he has officially said regarding the figures is the, the bid that was sent from the Turkish club was €1 million Euro less than the Rangers evaluation for James Henry Tavernier. So again, Rangers could reject that proposal or hit a counter and everything like that. But I feel like when a team does bid like that close to a player's evaluation, you know what I mean? Because we're used to selling players and kicking players out the door saying, oh, he, he was worth this, but we've got absolute crumbs. If a club comes in and bids just one million euro less than what we have said Tavernier is actually worth, uh, worth sorry, it shows that one, the club's very keen, and two, Rangers are preparing for life without Tavernier if they've gave that evaluation, the clubs came in that close. So it does suggest talk should progress, but again, it is all a question of ifs and maybes regarding these deals. Until the player is literally doing this, ladies and gentlemen, you just never, ever know. It can fall down in so many different ways. I mean, we're talking about a player going to Turkey. We sent Scott Wright to Turkey twice last year, you know what I mean? Michael Beale took him to Turkey, drove him off, went back to Auckland Howie to start up training, and who was sitting there putting out the cones, Scotty, Scotty right. sometimes it just doesn't happen, so it's not a guarantee that Tavernier will be leaving this football club, but it does suggest that the clubs are very very keen sorry, to get to a deal, and then 
it's on the player who's against contract ends in 2026. But that's the official news. And there's no official evaluation. There's no official number that's getting fired out there. The real journalists that's broke this before the tapping merchant fab came and took the story and fired out. That's all he said about it. But again, he says talks are progressing and Rangers received the bid. But before we do go ahead and get to the part of the video where I talk about whether I think it's time to get rid of Tavernier or that we can afford to get rid of Tavernier, is there a replacement near? And I know everyone's screaming, Sterling, Sterling, Sterling. But stay tuned for that part of the video because there is a couple things I do want to talk about. I'm just going to look at his most recent season of football and that will bleed us in and that will give us a foundation to move where I want to go with today's video. And I'm only looking at the most recent season of football one because it's not official yet that Tavernier's leaving or even the bid's been accepted or Tavernier will be gone anywhere. And for the day that Tavernier does leave, whether it's this summer or in January or next summer or whenever, I feel like because of the years his service he's put in and the mileage he's put in on his knee, and the experiences gave us the big goals and the big moments and the controversial figure that he actually is despite all of that it deserves its own video to really reflect on the legacy of James Henry Tavernier if you actually will but that's not what we're here today we're not here to look at everything we're just looking at a player potentially moving on this summer so let's see what he'd done for us last season and I feel like that's fair to actually do and what the Turkish club is actually bidding for is a man who played 58 games last season and scored 24 goals, ladies and gentlemen. 24 goals from a right back, if you actually will, which is absolutely absurd. His assist totals did drop a little bit, though, as it went down to 12 assists, and I think a lot of that was because of the shift in style of play, which is an important talking point and breathing point throughout the entire video, as he is getting a wee bit older. He wasn't he the same guy bombing down the wing constantly, whipping in ball after ball after ball. He was a bit more restricted. His leash was pulled back a little bit. It was getting to the edge of the box. It was having a strike. It was the occasional back post run, but it was nowhere near the tavernier we've seen year upon year upon year. And that's a very important foundation to the overall point of today's video, ladies and gentlemen. But still, even in saying that, you're looking at 36 goal contributions. <laughs> Apologies troops, I couldn't actually catch my laughter there and recover the recording because it was just an absurd thing to say. Like, you know what, it still catches me, even after the years, firing out 38 goal contributions in 58 games for someone who's turning 33 this year. It is a joke that we're even contemplating letting this laddie go because if you love stats, you love Tavernier and look I know a lot of you like stats and love stats I mean ironically my stats of my videos show people watch the, the the stats breakdown in terms of the football and CV and the player profiles and the rumour videos then they click off I know a lot of people love the stats and statistics and they do help to paint a little bit of the picture but eye test is so so damn important and I feel like it is important to discuss especially if we want to have a mature conversation about where we are as a club and where we want to go going forward because yes on paper Tavernier's season last season is an absolute joke. You know what I mean? It's You're looking at it and say, why are we letting him go? But again, we've actually seen how we're letting him go. You know what I mean? Yes, he scored the goal in the cup final that season and that was a crowning moment for him. That should have been the moment that sparked this team on to go. They've won the first domest domestic trophy of the season. They've got to go ahead and win the rest. It should be a momentum. Win. Should, should, should. But it wasn't he ladies and gentlemen, and as much as I give Tavernier credit for scoring that goal and being better than what I think a lot of people rate him for, I do also feel like it's very fair to put on the table. You could argue that goal that he scored in the cup final was the last time he reached his level, and really, the last sort of boy kicked that season is I think over the last couple months of that season Tavernier was as poor as I've seen him. Now I'm going to say something that's very unpopular especially at the minute but it is how I feel about it. Tavernier has made this club actually run over the last eight years as captain and overall nine years that he's been here. I truly actually believe it. He's set it. He's actually drove it. Now it's not, I know it's not always went to the destination we all wanted it to go but again that's not always been on that laddie, you know what I mean? Since pulling on the captain's armband eight years ago no Rangers captain ever has faced the pressure that he's faced and especially the scrutiny now I get it, it's a modern day with social media, like that's always going to be the case but especially when you consider the fact that he's came back in for the championship in to the top flight and he's had to battle and hold the pressure with the rivalry of the old firm against an already established Celtic squad that were much better than us on the park and especially 
off the park. You know what I mean? So far away for us in terms of finances. When Tavernier was put in as the captain, they had so much better run. Flipping this player, bringing in this guy, making profit in this. They were so far ahead of us. And then everybody sits and looks at Tavernier like he was supposed to drag some of the draws or send the Ross and Cranchar and everything like that to winning titles versus that well-oiled winning machine. I understand it when it comes to the rivalry side. And Celtic fans will call him captain failure. They'll do what they want. Right, that's rivalry. That's what it's always been. I understand the football side of it. But when we start doing it to our aim, I feel like it's very disingenuous. You know what I mean? We can't compare trophy holes for this guy and this guy and this guy and say, oh, look at that. Because that's using stats. But I thought we didn't like stats because Tavernier's got stats. So it's got to be really fair when you look at it. Tavernier has played with some absolute guff that makes me feel sick that they got to wear the Ranger shirt if I'm being brutally honest they should have never been doing it if we were at our level and playing the way we should have been and running the club the way it should have been running it shouldn't have reached that level but Tavernier was a part of that and he offered some good moments and he dragged some truly awful teammates to some great highs now clearly He's got some faults, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to sit here and pretend he's the greatest defender in the world and that. He's clearly got faults and holes in his games. But do you know what separates this team and over the last eight, nine years or whatever to actually successful teams is? They've looked at a player like Tavernier that's got so many pros, so many things to get behind the goals, the assists, the set pieces that he fires and the chances he creates per game that is just far and away above everyone. Do you know what our successful Rangers teams would have done? Do you know what like the likes of Walter Smith and that would have done? The great Walter Smith would have done? He'd have brought in players that are actually complement that and cover for that and he'd have built his team in formation and a style of play that allows Tavernier to be Tav whilst also not leaving us completely exposed. It's no his fault we've not done our jobs properly, ladies and gentlemen. Again, he has dragged some truly awful teammates over the line. Actually, and good players. He's dragged good players over the line as well. The likes of Morelos who we all love right here. He's went through his troubles and ups and downs and bad forms and everything. Tavernier was there to drag him around. You had the likes of Ryan Kent, who we all really liked at a certain stage, scoring three goals back-to-back -back seasons. Tavernier was still there. Drying along. Joe Rebo had a good six months before the Africans' Cup of Nations. We all loved him and all that as well. Who was the consistent guy dragging them? And what's really a really shame, ladies and gentlemen, it's a real damning statement, is that when Tavernier, every single time, despite picking up the slack when our favourite players were struggling, the second Tavernier was struggling, not one of them could drag him the line, and for me, that summaries, summarises my entire thoughts and opinions on Tavernier and his time at this football club. He was never the problem, but his dip in form and his poor runs that eventually saw us fold like a deck chair last season, it highlights what the problem actually is, and that is we, as a club, haven't built a team good enough to perform when Tav is not doing Tav Hings, if... You get me? So I, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here to sit and feast on the potential carcass of James Henry Tavernier's Rangers career. That's not what I'm here today. The day. However, where well, I have defended a lot of his good points and why I think a lot of the stuff said about him is a bit shocking, in my opinion, we have to look at it real realistically and as a business. Tavernier is turning 33 years old and as I have mentioned throughout today's video, the last couple months of last season we really needed some performances. It just went doing and doing and doing and that comes with age ladies and gentlemen. He's played over 150 games since turning 30 at a right back position that you'll know from watching the Rangers games is a very physically demanding position. It's not a Perlow position in the middle of the park. It's not a Devo position in the middle where they're able just to orchestrate and they're never really at a full sprint. No, he's been demanded to go forward, demanded to go forward, demanded to go forward every single game. And again, he has been available, he has been reliable in terms of an injury and he is put in the graph. So despite me saying a lot of the stuff said about him is to harsh, do I actually think if this bid comes in and it meets the evaluation of what we set, whether it is the Turkish club or another club that's going to come in eventually, whenever it does happen, if a bid came in right now hitting what Rangers feel he's worth, should we accept it? Truly? And I didn't want to be saying this ladies and gentlemen, but it's true. Yeah. 
of course, we actually do. We have to get better as an actual business, and it starts with the likes of this right here. He's turning 33. That dip, that poor period, is only going to get worse and worse now as he gets all the lazy room. He's still going to have highs. If he does end up staying here, he probably will still, still, still score goals and assists and everything like that, but he's never going to have a complete season like he did when he was a bit, a little bit younger, winning golden boots, etc. etc. He's never going to be there. It's only going to get worse now, and us as a business can't afford to lose another player like Tavernier and a player that's built this much and done this much for absolute nothing. Barisic, Morelos, Kent, Lundstrom are four players that have walked out of this football club making us absolutely nothing. We can't afford to keep doing this. That's how we are in the mess that we are in as a club. If the bids come in, if it's re it reached the evaluation, I'm alright, we are moving on because that is what a club and a football club should be doing, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on players when their time has passed. And unfortunately for Tav, his time troops, I really feel like it is. Whether it is to Turkey or to another club for a different country, whatever it is, I feel like we've got to start preparing for life without Tav. And here, which takes me to the last talking point in today's video, and that is what life could potentially look like without Tavernier. And again, screaming Sterling, and everyone's buzzing about Sterling starting to right back, and I am as well, as I think he is a better right back than Tavernier in terms of the traditional sense, and I think we'll be more defensively sound and stop conceding goals all the time to somebody running down the wing and crossing the football. He's got a bit more pace. Again, he's a bit more defensive. He's clearly lacking in terms of the attacking aspect. I mean, Sterling was even played in attacking forwards and attacking chances and he missed some absolute sitters so clearly he's no goal with Tavernier's goal but again that can be worked on now it's on Clement to actually buy a right winger and buy someone that's going to impact games get attacking players scoring and assisting it's on him now to build the squad that he actually wants maybe Clement's style of play Disney feature and Disney um, have a right back running the actual show maybe just maybe if Tavernier moves on, Clement will be able to really put the final pieces in and what he wants his squad to look at. And if that's it, Sterling at right back, I understand it. But, and there is a but, ladies and gentlemen, where I said earlier on I was a little bit nervous of what life would look like without Tavernier. The only reason I'm nervous is if you take Tavernier off the table, you've then got Sterling, who last season picked up three separate injuries. Three, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's the same amount as Tavernier in his last five seasons. And Tavernier's been playing week in, week out for five years, picking up three injuries. Sterling's played one season and picked up three. That's scary. Now, of course, we're going to keep everything cross at Sterling. Doesn't he pick up an injury? But again, we're being adults here and actually not burying our head under the sand. That's scary. Troops, now, you could argue now that he's going to be played in his natural position. He'll maybe pick up less knocks and less because he's getting asked to do less and train less in terms of all our things. But again, we're not sure on that. And where it sits is we've got Sterling and young Adam Devine. That's who we've got right then and there. And if Sterling does go down like he did three times, are we comfortable with Adam Devine being our right back and potentially a run of the season? That's a lot to ask. I was impressed in moments for him at Mullerwell, whilst others made me go, ah, he's still a young lad and he's still got a lot to learn. That's the question I want to ask. Everyone's celebrating and buzzing about Tavernier who can play over 50 games a season every single season. But, where does it leave us as a football club? Because you know our luck with injuries, you know our run with injuries, that's where it starts to scare me, and that's the only talking point I wanted to make. I wouldn't be comfortable with going in with Sterling and Devine as my right-backs, I really wouldn't. I'd actually want to get another one. If Tavernier does go, I feel like we need another one. Maybe a young laddie backing up the likes of Sterling. Absolutely, I'm fine with that. But I feel like that does need to be solidified, because the facts are, Sterling picked up three injuries last year, and he didn't play that much, so he'll be demanding, or he'll be getting a lot more physically demanding if he claim on, if he's playing week in, week in, week out, sorry, at right back, so, aye, that's all I wanted to mention, everyone's buzzing, feasting on the carcass of James Henry Tavernier, but be careful what you wish for, ladies and gentlemen, because you know our luck with actual injuries, but that is it, that's my thoughts and opinions, do I think it's time to sell Tavernier? Yes, do I think Tavernier is as bad as a lot of people say he was? No. But do I feel like I'm comfortable with where we are if we do move Tavernier? No, I feel like we need to sign another right back. What about you? Let me know your thoughts sorry, and opinions on the three talking points in today's video and the three questions right there. Are we ready to go if we move Tav? 
Do we need another right back? Or should Tavenier stay at the football club? Very interested to see your comments down in the comments section below. Can't wait to see your thoughts and opinions on this one. But until next time, I've been CJ92. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.